the challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On, King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Young Billy Sanders looked at his father anxiously as they sat in their snug, warm cabin with their feet close to the pot-bellied stove. Normally, Billy looked forward to this part of the evening, when the supper had been cleared away and he and his dad could talk or read together. But tonight, Jim Sanders' face looked grim, and a scowl creased his forehead. Whoever is robbing my traps is mighty clever at it. I wish I could lay my hands on him. But if a man did it, I don't see how he could cover his tracks. Only a man could cover him, son. A wolf or a fox could be trailed easy. It's not hard to cover tracks. You can do it by brushing soft snow over with a feather. It's better than having your trail followed. You think the thief could have robbed any of Jewel's traps? Well, Jewel's trap line is near enough to mine to be within the thief's territory. I think I'll go over to Jewel's cabin tomorrow morning and have a talk with him. What if Jewel's traps have been robbed, too? We'll just have to do something about catching the thief, that's all. Trap robbing is a serious thing. It's our living. And if we catch the man who did it, it'll be too bad for him. Someone must be coming. The dogs are barking. I don't see who it could be at this hour. I'll look out and see. Hello, Billy. Hello, Jewel. It's Jewel's dad. Come on in. <laughs> Hello, Jules. We were just talking about you. Take off your parka. Oh, man, see that fire, it will feel good. Put a kettle of water on, Billy. We'll give him some hot tea. Sure. Sit down here, Jules. Get warm. We... I have come to talk to you about my traps. They have been robbed. That's what I was going over to see you about in the morning. Mine were robbed, too. Huh. That's what I think happened, maybe. The thief covered his tracks, though, even in the soft snow. Did he do that with your traps, too? All but one place. There I find moccasin tracks. Maybe thief hears someone come and does not have time for to cover them, eh? Where did you trail them, Jewel? No. Those tracks, they go to smooth crust of snow where wind blow loose snow off. There I lose him. He must have made quite a big haul if he covered both our trap lines. We've got to do something about it, Jules. He's taking the pick of our furs. Uh, to catch him... That will be very hard. I bet the Mounties could get him. Sergeant Preston could catch him, I'll bet. The trouble is, this thief may not rob our traps again. Uh, I'd hate to have the mounted police make a special trip out here for nothing. Oh, maybe it is time soon for them to make their patrol here. Huh? I'll tell you what I think we'd better do. We'll go to Fox Creek tomorrow to the trading post and report this. If the mail comes through, they can send word to Dawson. Mm. In the meantime, we'll do everything we can to catch him ourselves. It was almost a week later that Billy and his father again made the rounds of their trap line. But this time, they made a wide circle and reversed their regular route. No sign of the trap robber had been seen. And they were about to inspect the last trap before making camp for the night. The early darkness was falling when suddenly, from behind a thicket on the trail, they heard a dog yelping. Dad, there's a dog. Hear him? Ho, ho! Ho, Chief! It sounds as if somebody's beaten him. Come on. It's over there, near that thicket. Oh, you don't follow me. Yeah. Stay back. Well, you learn. Hey, you! Quit beating that dog. Or I'll take the hide off you, you dirty rat. That poor pup. What? You! The coward. Look at him run. Guess he was afraid you'd give him some of his own medicine. Poor dog can hardly stand up. That half-breed didn't waste any time getting away. It's a good thing for him that it's just about dark. If I could catch him, I'll bet he'd never beat another dog again. Poor little fellow. Look, Dad, he's just a puppy. That dirty half-breed almost killed him. Ah, it's a good thing we happen to be coming along the trail. <laughs> Let's take him home with us. He's hurt. Oh, but he isn't our dog, son. That man will probably come back for him. I don't care if he does. Nobody deserves to keep a dog if he treats him like this. Yeah, I... Guess you're right, son. 
Now, you'd better carry him back to the sled. Dad, look over there, beside that tree. There in the snow. Where? Why, what? I'd better see what it is. It looks like a white fox. Maybe that half-breed dropped it. It's a dead fox, all right. Almost couldn't see it in the snow. He must have trapped it and put it down when he saw the dog following him. Why didn't he pick it up? He left. Well, it seems to me he was mighty scared to run like that. Maybe he had more reason to be scared than we think. What do you mean? Or just beating his dog. Or, or most men would stop and argue about it. No, I, he was afraid of me for another reason. You mean that box? Yes. Our trap is right near here. Now, you get that dog back to the sled and we'll find our trap. Sure. Come on, fellow. Uh, uh-huh. oh, never mind. I'm not going to hurt you. You're going to be my dog now. Did you get a look at that half-breed's face? Yes, I did. He was part Indian, and he had a big scar on his right cheek. Yes, I saw that, too. I'd know him if I saw him again. Wouldn't you, Dad? I'm sure I would. Now, now here's a sled. Put that pup on it. You better put him right in that sleeping bag and strap it down. Good idea. Get in there, boy. Lie down. That's it. I think you'll stay there, Dad. His leg is hurt. You better sit on there and hold him. The trap's only about 50 yards ahead. Sure. All right, Dad. Mush! Mush, Chief! Get along there! How old do you think this pup is, Dad? About six or seven months, I'd say. Do you think I could keep him for a pet instead of just making a sled dog out of him? Sure, if you want to. Maybe hard to tame after the treatment he's had. I'll bet he hates that half-breed. I certainly wouldn't blame him if he did. Oh, that trap is closer than I thought. There's a big pine tree. Oh, oh, Chief! Oh, I... Getting awfully dark. I know, right where that trap is. And it's not too dark to find out what I want to know. What if he did rob our trap? Will you try and catch him tomorrow? I'm afraid there wouldn't be much use. We've had a good look at him, and that'll be all Sergeant Preston will need if he gets up here. Now, here's a trap right here. There's nothing in it. It's been sprung. And here's blood on the snow. Billy, that was our trap robber, all right. There's no doubt about it. I hope Sergeant Preston gets up here soon. We sent word by the mailman. If we're lucky, the sergeant will be here in a day or so. We'll follow our trap line and get home as fast as possible. Now, let's go back and make camp for the night. It was late the following day that Billy and his father reached home. As they neared the cabin, they saw a dog team out in front. Dad, look, there's a dog team. We have visitors. I'm glad we left the door open. Whoever it is has started to fire. There's smoke coming out of the chimney. I'll bet it's Sergeant Preston. That looks like his dog team. And there's King watching it. Ho! Ho, Chief! Ho! Bring that dog in with you, Billy. He can take care of the team later. Sure, Dad. Come on, fellow. I'm taking you inside. Hold the door open for me, will you, Dad? Hello, Jim. Hope you don't mind my breaking in like this. How are you, Sergeant? I'm mighty glad you did. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Oh, hello, Billy. What's that you're carrying? New pup? We found a man beating him. He's... Oh. <laughs> Lie down there, boy. Oh, Jim, this is Constable Pat Wilcox, Jim Sanders. Howdy, Constable. How are you, Mr. Sanders? And this is Billy Sanders. Hello, Billy. Hello, Constable. This is Pat's first trip north. I'm breaking him in. Well, I'm glad you stopped here. Did you get my message, Sergeant? Yes, we did, Jim. As a matter of fact, we met the mailman halfway from Dawson. He told us about your trap robberies. Wait, I get my park off, and I'll tell you all about it. All right. Sit down and make yourselves comfortable. Sergeant, will you look at this dog for a minute? He's hurt. You know all there is to know about dogs. Well, of course I'll look at him, Billy. Oh, he's been beaten all right. Now, let's see, little fella. I won't hurt you. Easy now. We think the half-breed who was beating him is the same one who robbed the trap. He ran when we came, and we found a white fox he'd taken from our trap. You mean you actually saw him? Yes. Didn't we, Dad? Yep, we did. He's a half-breed, Sergeant. We practically caught him red-handed. Well, Pat, looks as if you're going to have some excitement on this patrol. That's what the inspector told me, Sergeant. He said if I came with you and King, I'd be certain to see some action. Why don't you bring King inside, Sergeant? I'll bring him in when I bed the team down tonight. That's a nice pup, Billy. He's not hurt too much. He'll be all right in a day or so. Gee, thanks, Sergeant. I'm going to keep him. Jim. Here, that boy, you're going to... I want to hear more about this trap robber. 
Later. Tell me just where you saw him and try and remember everything you can about him. Well, he was a little taller than average, and he had a long scar on his right cheek. Mm. Looked like a knife cut. We just got a quick look at his face, but you couldn't miss that scar. Pat and I will start out to try and find him in the morning. Are you troubled much with trap robbers in this part of the country? No, not often. Trap robbing up here is a major offense, Pat. People have been lynched for it. Even the Indians know how serious it is. Jim, I want you and Billy to tell me all about this. From the first time you discovered that your traps were being robbed. The two Monty's started out the next day to find the half-breed with a long scar on one cheek. But the search turned out to be a difficult one. No one knew or had seen a man answering to that description. It was two weeks later that Sergeant Preston and Constable Wilcox stopped at a small feeding post in an isolated spot called Moose Landing. They were greeted by Pete McNair, the proprietor. Well, Sergeant Preston. I haven't seen you in a dog's age. How are you, Pete? This is Constable Pat Wilcox. Howdy, Constable. Howdy, Pete. Well, what brings you way up here, Sergeant? This isn't your regular patrol. I, uh, I thought there might be a chance that you could give me some information, Pete. You do quite a lot of trading here. Yeah, it's the only trading post for miles around. It sure is lonesome. We're so far from any town. A lot of Indians bring their furs to you, don't they? Yes, but, uh, they haven't been doing so well this season. Well, not all of them, anyway. You mean uh, some of them have done a lot better than others? Everyone has. He isn't exactly an Indian, though. He's a half-breed named Otago. He's a good trapper, I guess, or else he works a lot harder than the rest of them. For a bad season, he's brought in a pile of fine furs. Has this Targo a big scar on his face? Oh, yes. Do you know him? I'm looking for him. That's why I'm here. Do you know where he lives? Nope. It's the first year I've ever seen him. He never talks much. Just does his trading and leaves. Most times he comes around during the evening when nobody's around. When was he here last? A couple of weeks ago, I think it was. He usually gets here about uh, twice a month. Then you think he might show up here this week sometime? More than likely he will. He's about due. Well, Pat, looks as if the only thing we can do is stay here at Moose Landing and wait for him. Would you put us up, Pete? I sure can. (laughs) And I'll be glad to have you. It'd be a pleasure to have some company. I'll go out and unhitch the dogs. Oh, uh... You don't mind if I bring King in with me, do you? I was wondering where he was. I'll be as glad to see that dog, as I am to see you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Pete! Pete! Here's Jake! What's wrong? I'm sorry, I'm sick. I've got a... This is lucky. This is Sergeant Preston, Constable Wilcox. This is Jake Smith. Hello, Hello Jake. Jake. Well, could one of you come with me right away? My partner's awful sick. I think maybe he's dying. I don't know what to do for him. Where do you live? About five miles from here. We're out in a cabin near the creek. Bill got a sore throat a few days ago, and he's been getting worse. Can I go out there with him, Sergeant? I studied medicine for two years before I joined the force. One of us should stay here to watch for Tago. Yes, you'd better go with this man, Pat. Take my dog team, and I'll stay here with King. Right. Well, thanks. Maybe you can save Bill. Come back as soon as you can, Pat, and good luck. Perhaps our friend Tago will show up before you return. It was late that evening, and a small lamp burned on the counter in the trading post. Sergeant Preston, with King beside him, was sitting with Pete, who was dozing in front of the big stove, when the door opened, huh? and a man with a big load of furs came in. Well, good evening. It's kind of late, ain't you? I was just about to go to bed. Mm. They got fur to trade. Where's well, Targo? Targo. Mounty. Well, he broke the lamp. He's gone. We'll get him. Come on, King. We'll You'll never get him, Sergeant. Sergeant. King will. After him, boy. Tago had acted so quickly, throwing the furs at the lamp, that the Monty and Pete were taken completely by surprise, and the half-breed had a good start as he sped through the darkness toward the safety of the woods. He didn't know that behind him a swift, dark shadow was almost on his heels as King pursued him silently. Then, suddenly, a great dog leaped at his back. Oh, Get up, Tago. Go back to the trading post. Well, yeah. King certainly caught him in a hurry. Do not put me in jail. Me not do nothing. Start walking back. Don't try to get away or this dog will go after you. Why you come after, Tago? If you're innocent, why did you run away? Uh, me scared. You not prove nothing. Yeah, I guess he's right, Sergeant. We can't prove he stole those furs. You're going to take him back to Jim Sanders' place. He and Billy can identify him as the trap robber they saw with a white fox he'd taken from their trap. Jim Sanders can appear as a witness against him when he's tried at Dawson. Well, he answers a description they gave, that's sure. Just as soon as Pat gets back, we'll start for the Sanders place. 
I'm sure we'll find that Targo's the man we're looking for. Constable Wilcox stayed with the sick man through the following day. Two days later, Taco and the two Mottis were within a few miles of the Sanders cabin. A trail led through some thick timber where the large branches of tall pine trees stretched over it. Taco had been sullen and silent, but gave them no trouble. He feared the great dog that had been the means of his capture, and King guarded him carefully as he had been told to do. There had been a heavy snowfall the night before, and now there was a deathly stillness in the forest. Suddenly, however, it was broken by an ominous crack overhead. And a huge limb of a pine tree came crashing down. Look out that tree! Oh, 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 oh you asking? Sergeant, Sergeant! I, I didn't quite... Oh, my side. Wait, I'll get this tree limb off you. Oh, oh. branches heavy. There. Uh, are you hurt much? Like the window. Oh, oh, my side. Uh-huh. Oh. I'm afraid oh. a couple of your ribs are cracked. I'll get the sled back here and put you on it. Is Targo still there? Don't worry about Targo. King is standing right beside him. I'll get you on the sled. Can't be much farther to Jim Sanders' cabin. The trip was very painful for Sergeant Preston, but at last he lay on a cot in Jim Sanders' cabin. Targo sat in the corner with the great dog King lying before him as Constable Wilcox and Jim finished binding the ribs of the Monty. There. That should help a lot, Sergeant. Thanks, Pat. It's a good job. I'm afraid I'm not going to be much help on the trip to Dawson. I think you ought to stay here for a few days, Sergeant, before you attempt that trip. You said you wanted me to go to Dawson with you to identify this Targo at the trial, didn't you? Why, yes, Jim. You're sure he's the man, aren't you? I could swear he was. When Billy comes back, we'll know for sure. He got a better look at him than I did. Why don't you wait and rest up a couple of days, Sergeant? You can let Constable Wilcox take Targo to Dawson... I'll take you later on my dog sled. Well, That's a good idea, Preston. You will be able to travel by then. I can find the way to Dawson from here. I don't know why I had to be right under that branch when it fell. They certainly timed it perfectly. <laughs> if it hadn't been for that man getting sick up in Moose Landing, we'd have missed it. Man getting sick? I spent over a day with a man up there who died of scarlet fever. We were delayed because of that. And you couldn't do anything for him, huh? No, it was too late. Nothing could have saved him. Fate plays funny tricks sometimes. Well, that's Billy now. Why, it's Sergeant Preston. Why, it's what's wrong with you? It's a trap, Robert. You've caught him. Come back, Flash. Flash remembers him. I guess that's all the proof we need. Better put Flash outside, Billy. Yes, I'd better. Come on, Flash. Outside, boy. That dog is crazy about Billy. They're always together. He remembers that Togo beat him. Will it be all right for me to start back to Dawson today, Sergeant? Oh, I think so, Pat. You can get as far as Pearson's Roadhouse by tonight, and from there on, you shouldn't have much trouble. I think you've had enough experience in the North Country by now to make it. We'll follow in two days. It was three days before Sergeant Preston was well enough to take the long trip to Dawson with Jim Sanders. They traveled slowly and had almost reached their destination when they met a trapper on the trail. As he recognized Sergeant Preston, he stopped his dog team. Okay, ho! Sergeant Preston. Hey, that isn't your dog team, but I thought I recognized King ahead there, though. How are you, Hank? I'm fine, Sergeant. Thanks. I suppose you're coming to get that other Mountie that they found on the trail. What's his name? Uh, Constable Wilcox. What? What are you talking about? Well, I thought that's why you were here. He's at Dan Connor's cabin. Dan found him on the trail about two days ago. He's been pretty sick. Was there a half-breed with him? Half-breed? No, not that I know of. Dan's cabin's up the trail a short way, isn't it? Yes, Sergeant. It's the next one, just around the bend. Thanks, Hank. Come on, Jim. We'd better get there fast. Hush! Hush, your huskies! Hush! Sergeant, you think Togo escaped? Looks like it, Jim. I'm afraid we should have brought Billy with us. Billy? Well, he stays alone all the time. He's 14. He can take care of... You mean on account of Togo? There may not be any danger, but that half-breed looked ugly when you and Billy identified him. What do you think happened? You think he tried to kill Constable Wilcox? Here's the cabin. We'll soon find out. Oh, oh, Chief! Oh! Tell your dog, Sergeant. Constable's here, all right. Let's go in. Come in. Sergeant, it's you. What happened to you, Pat? Did Togo attack you? No, I... I got sick the day after I left your cabin. Don't come too near me, you do. I have scarlet fever. Scarlet fever? It's not too bad a case. I'll be better soon. 
why I'm making Dan stay at a neighbor's cabin. I guess I caught it from that man who died in Moose Landing. It hit me the day after I left. I got a fever and must have gone to sleep on the sled. That's when Targo got away. It's a wonder he didn't kill you and take the sled. He was probably afraid to touch me for fear I'd wake up. He didn't have a gun, and I did. And he ran off into the woods the first chance he got. I made a sorry mess of everything, Sergeant. I can't tell you how bad I feel. Never mind, Pat. We'll get Targo. It's you I'm worried about. Oh, I'm all right. Dan brings food and takes care of me. All I really need now is rest. Sergeant, maybe we'd better get back to Billy. But did you leave young Billy alone? Yes, we did. You'd better get back to him, Sergeant. Tuggo made some nasty threats after we left you. He blames Jim and Billy for everything. He may try to get revenge. Will you be all right if we leave you? Don't worry about me. Dan is taking good care of me. You, you get back to Billy. I'll take my dog team, Jim. My dogs are rested and they'll be faster than yours. Come on, we'll start back right away. Two days had gone by, and Billy missed his father. He had been out hunting with Flash, and as he neared the cabin in the fading light, he felt a pang of loneliness. Then he brightened as he heard someone call. Hello, Billy! Oh, Jules, is that you? Oui. Golly, I'm glad you came over. You can help me with Flash. He got a bad cut on his foot from some sharp ice. Hmm? See, he's running on three legs. Oh. Oh, that will not be hard to cure. Come on in with me and stay for supper. Hmm? <laughs> That is what I plan to do. Uh, your father, he has left, no? They left a couple of days ago. I'm sure glad Sergeant Preston caught that trap robber. Mm, that was a good thing. But something else has happened now. What? Jules want to tell you. Keep your storeroom locked. Last night, someone steal salt and quarter of caribou I have in my storeroom. Stole it? Who could have done that? I have seen moccasin track in back of the cabin. Probably some hungry Indian. I wonder why I didn't ask you for food. You would have given it to him. There is lots of game to shoot, but maybe he has no gun to shoot it, eh? I didn't even lock our cabin when I left this morning. Come on in, Flash. Go on, fella. Come on, Jules. Oui. What's wrong with you, Flash? That dog. <coughs> Why he act like this? There's no one here. Look at him. He's there. He'd stand up straight on his back. He's never acted like this before. Wait. Maybe he gets sent of man who robbed me. Maybe that man come here too, huh? He has taken something, you think? I had my gun with me, but my hunting knife. I forgot it this morning. It was here on this table, but it's gone. Oh, that is the same robber who steal from me, I bet you. Oh, well, it's probably some Indian who lost his pack. I think maybe I stay here tonight. That'll be fine, Jewel. Uh, but I'm not afraid. Tomorrow I'll have to spend the day fixing our traps on the creek. But I'll lock the cabin and leave Flash here. His foot is too sore to take him with me. Mm, that is wise. Now I'll get some supper ready. Take off your park and make yourself at home. It was dusk the following evening when Billy started for home after baiting the last trap at the edge of the creek. He missed the comforting companionship of his dog as he walked through the shadows of the spruce trees and began to whistle to keep up his courage. Then suddenly, as he passed a dense thicket, a figure sprang out at him. We got you. Uh, let me go. Let go, I say. I not let you go. You come with Tuggo. Tuggo? I, uh, where did you come from? Me get away. Me tie your hands. Let go, you thief. Give me that gun. There. Your hands tied. Now you come. I won't. I won't go with you. We got knife. You walk. No. Oh, stop it. I'll go. We go in wood. This way. You'll be sorry for this. My father will find me. You'll not find where I take you. We go far back off trail. What? What are you going to do? I uh, may not know yet. But maybe you'll be sorry you tell about Tago. That was a wolf. <laughs> maybe Tago tie you, leave you for a wolf. That'd be bad for you. It'd be better than staying with you, you dirty thief. Uh, maybe Tago tie you to a tree. And kill with knife. You like to hurt people, just the way you hurt Flash. I hope they catch you and hang you. Walk faster. Oh. Faster! <laughs> You'll be sorry you tell on Tago. 
It was late that evening when Sergeant Preston and Jim Sanders stopped the dog team in front of Jim's cabin. Okay. Hold your husky. Well, I wonder if Billy's staying with Jules or something. Well, there's no light. That sounds like Flash. Maybe Billy's asleep. The cabin's locked. It's a good thing I have my key. Billy! He's not here. I'll light a lamp. Funny that Billy isn't here. He wouldn't lock Flash up and leave him here all night, would he? I don't see why. If he stayed with Jules, he'd have taken Flash with him. That pup looks worried. Where's Billy Flash? Can you find Billy Flash? Maybe we'd better put a leash on Flash and go looking for Billy. Something may have happened to him. Good idea. His leash is right over here. I hope Billy didn't have an accident. Deep in the spruce forest, some distance from the cabin, a small campfire lighted up the cruel face of Tago the half-breed as he stood before Billy. The cold bit into the boy's flesh as he struggled with a rope that bound him to a tree. The ugly, scarred face of Tago drew closer, and a knife gleamed in his hand. Now, Tago, get revenge for what you do. You tell police Tago is one who robbed trap. Why don't you go ahead and use that knife? You've been keeping me tied here forever. Dirty coward. You'd like to torture people. <laughs> Maybe now you're sorry, you tell. I'm not sorry. You're a trap robber and it ought to be hung. Maybe your father's sorry too when he find you dead. Maybe he'll never tell about Tago no more. My father and Sergeant Preston will get you if you kill me. <laughs> them far away. Tago not be here when them come back. They'll get you no matter where you are, you dirty thief. Let me not kill you fast. <laughs> He kills slow, like this. No, no, hell! Look at me! Take me! Take me! Stop! Billy, are you all right? Yeah, I'm so glad you got him. Get him away! Back, King, let him up. Get up, Targo. You're under arrest for attempted murder. Get dog away, be free. Get up, I say. You're not hurt. He was trying to kill me. He caught me when I was coming home from the creek. How did you find me? We found Flash alone in the cabin. He led us to you. Flash, old fellow. That's why you were worried. You knew Tago had been around the cabin, didn't you, boy? It's a good thing you left him in the cabin. We never would have found you. I had him on leash, or we never could have kept up with him. Is his foot better? His foot? It was cut. Oh. Let's see it, boy. Well, I guess he was so worried about you, he forgot about himself. His foot is bleeding. King is a wonderful dog, Sergeant. But I think I have a pretty good dog, too. We're both very lucky, Billy. <laughs> Yes, King, old fella. Thanks to you and Flash, this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Saturday night dull, not on your life if you keep company with ABC. We have a lineup of shows to keep you entertained from early in the evening until it's time to go out and get the Sunday morning papers. For mystery a la mode, Ross Dolan Detective is on hand Saturday nights. And when Ross seeks to solve a crime, it means 30 minutes of solid action and suspense. Speaking of suspense, wait till you hear famous jury trials. The stirring courtroom program that dramatizes typical American jury trials. Then there's gangbusters with true crime cases straight from police files all over the country. Murder and Mr. Malone is another tense mystery that's bound to keep you sitting on the edge of your chair as that famous criminal lawyer, John J. Malone, tackles a case of murder. For smashing thrills from early to late Saturday nights, be sure to listen when these great...